Hi, this is Yosip Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFLS Talk. And today we have with us once again, Tanmay Gopal, co-founder and CEO of Hasura. Tanmay, it's great to have you on the show again. Thanks, Swapna. Thanks for having me. And today we are going to talk about a lot of things, of course, Hasura, Contrary 3, uh, some product announcements and future of data APIs. But before we go there, uh, I, I'm trying to be uh, a, a bit greedy here. We also ran a whole series on data for uh, June. So I would like to just quickly talk a bit about that uh, because I would love to use you know your inputs there is that if you look at from the traditional IT and the whole cloud native because of Kubernetes centric world, how you have seen the evolution of data? That's a great question. I think we're at a tipping point in the industry uh, in the way that we're starting to think about data, right? So um, what happened over the last year was that we we realized that we need to uh, get really productive with kind of developing applications of the cloud. And one of the big challenges with the developing applications of the cloud was that we needed to have you always grow out of the use case of being able to use just one data source and one database, right? And you always need to have more and more databases um, that you want to build so that you can kind of scale out, right? For all kinds of things, maybe your workloads change, the amount of data that you have changes and stuff like that. I think um, what we've realized as an industry now is that we're this route that we went down where we have so many microservices and each microservice is kind of working with each data store is becoming cumbersome. It's getting velocity. People are getting very frustrated with the total amount of complexity that is increased in the system. And so what people want to do essentially is be able to use more data sources. Now, what has happened also over the last few years is that the explosion in the, um, in the capabilities that all the database vendors are offering in the variety of data sources that we have has also exploded, right? So in the last five years, there've been about a thousand database and database adjacent startups that have been launched just in the last five years, which is, you know, which is insane. So this, what, what the world is kind of now transitioning to is the idea of saying, can we make our database vendors do more work as long as they have open standards? And I think that's the evolution that we are seeing now. We kind of want to go more from a service first world uh, into more of a data first world. And I think we're at the tipping point where that transition we're starting to see. I think especially with the stuff that's happening with AI, that value of data and being able to use that data ASAP, right? Take data out from one place, use it to do something else, integrate it with product. It's all becoming even more important, right? So I think like we're going to see that transition from being service first into data first. Uh, and of course, all of the innovation that has happened in the industry is going to help that so far, right? All the cloud native work that we've done, all the Kubernetes innovation that has happened, it's all going to help. As you're talking about this evolution, uh, as we have seen in the early days of the whole cloud movement, uh, DevOps movement was there. We have seen DevSecOps movement there, NetOps is there, AIOps is there. Uh, things are, we are talking about shift left movement with more about security, but what we're talking basically about cultural and people. When it comes to data, how much do you see we also need the cultural shift? Because when we look at data, once again, in the traditional world, it was a silo of folks who knew about data. We still talk about data scientists, you know, data engineers. It's not, and data is something folks get intimidated and data, discussion about data doesn't become very interesting topics. Of course, generative AI is making things interesting. How much you are seeing the importance of cultural shift that is needed within in organizations? So when we look at the data first word, uh, culturally they are not looking at as a silo or hey, we just got a solution and we're done. We're seeing a massive cultural kind of shift um, that is being driven by, I think, the overall macro situation as well, right? So let's let's let kind of just to break that down to some specifics, right? The first thing is. When we talk about data first and we talk about the data first world, we often, and we think about data scientists and data engineers, we're often thinking about OLAP and BI type data. But there's also a lot of transactional data that needs to be put to use, right? There's a lot of like, there's it's, it's a spectrum of data that you have that is real time, that is streaming, that is analytical, that is being used for BI. Now, it's all becoming unified. We are no longer living in a world where there's this clear separation between transactional data and analytical data. We want to merge those, right? People, our, our users are getting wiser. They're expecting a product to be integrated automatically with analytical information to be enriched, to be enriched with AI, but also to be enriched with just analytical information. So 
a this whole um, it's 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 kind of becoming a continuous spectrum so this is happening and being driven from users naturally now now the 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 shift the cultural shift that needs to happen um is because ultimately what is happening is that and i think it's mostly driven by the macro um all the ceos in the world right all companies in the world they all have a mandate saying we have to move faster we have to be more efficient and um we all need to get more done with what we have today right and that is the biggest need of the market right we need to innovate we need to make progress we need to add end user value we need to create business value and we need to do it with lesser resources we need to do it more efficiently um that was kind of the macro situation that we've been in the last for the last year or so um that is still very much the case and with ai it's even more pressing like we have to get to adding value as fast as possible whoever is not adding value is going to suffer now in this world when you think about being able to go fast we are burdened with too much complexity in our technology stack in our product development stack there is too much process that we are trying to fight against um in companies of all sizes right like you said there's devops there's ai ops there's there's product ops there's data ops it's it's a lot it's a lot there's too many people there's too many processes there's too many ops it's becoming really hard to think through how to ultimately add value and leverage all this information that we have right and so where i see this going in in kind of helping address that complexity is the culture shift that is required of people right i think is going to go in like two directions the first culture shift is that everybody is going to have to become more product and end user focused product kit product thinking product engineering is going to be more valuable than any other form of kind of engineering or any other kind of mindset in the organization right the the product thinkers in the organization and people who are as close to the end user as possible they are the most valuable people in the organization empowering them is the way to kind of deal with all of this chaos right just to say look i don't as a ceo i don't understand the complexity but here are the people they are the closest to my end users they are the closest to my customers they know what to do work backwards from them and simplify everything right that that is kind of one one anchor point that helps us think through how to reduce chaos the second piece here to think through it from the data point of view is that let us start to leverage best of breed polyglot data as much as possible we know that we can build really good products if we use the best data sources that are available right if i can if i can make my data migrate faster move faster if i can de-risk the adoption of new data sources and new data vendors then i can ma- build a product faster right instead of saying can i scale my legacy system to handle this new kind of workload no alongside my legacy system can i now use the best of breed data system also for this new workload yes you want to move towards that world because you know that a big part of product development can be enabled if you choose the best of breed data right a best of breed data source best of breed database vendor you know on whatever side it is now when you think about that i think the skill that becomes more important from a culture shift point of view and a technical skill point of view people who are from an engineering standpoint familiar with first principles of how data sources and data systems work right how streaming data works how analytical data works how transaction data works how databases work what the trade offs are those people are going to kind of become more important again in the organization because they can unlock value of data they can tell you the best practices of okay you've got a good amount of data in the relational database we need to move it into the analytical database to do stuff we need to integrate a vector database with our uh, relational database or with our uh, search database so that we can do uh, gen ai stuff with it this is the concurrency we need this is the latency that we need so you need people who are more familiar with um data systems and people uh, you can afford to be you can afford to have lesser expertise in building microservices in 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 having microservice expertise so i think the microservice expertise is going to shift towards becoming more data expertise and less about uh, building and scaling microservices because again like you just said in the beginning you have kubernetes now you have containers now you have serverless now so that expertise around scaling microservices less important because the infrastructure is handling it for us but that data expertise and domain understanding that's critical so those are i think the two big culture shifts right product and data those are the most important things that need to happen to unlock the 
velocity and efficiency that we need. Am I making sense? No, it does make sense. And thanks for, you know, once again, explaining it till. Uh, before we jump to the other topics, one more thing that I want to ask before uh, so to conclude this thread is that when we look at, uh, once again, if you look at the Kubernetes work, uh, CNCF Cloud Native World or Docker Container World, in the initial, it was all about innovation that was happening around it, about adoption and, and moving things in production. And then we started talking about security. Docker security became a big topic. Kubernetes security also became a big topic in two or three years ago. If you look at the data, uh, because data itself, once again, it's much more sensitive than a lot of other things. Uh, data production is important. Of course, uh, integrity is important. Um, uh, restore and backup is important. High availability is important. So talk about that aspect also that, you know, uh, where are these discussions when we talk about data? And of course, after that, we'll talk about Hasura and HasuraCon. Absolutely. No, I mean, and it ties up really well into, uh, into kind of the recent work that we've been doing as well. But, but it, it, this is exactly, I think, um, from a industry standpoint, a product standpoint, uh, process standpoint, the key thing that we need to solve, right? So like we just discussed, we want to move as quickly as possible and we want to move as efficiently as possible, right? To do that, we know that product thinking and product people need to be enabled because they know what to do and how to add value. And to do that, we also discussed that um, you need to unlock the value of data that you have or the new data that you want to create. Now in this, we talked about the drivers, right? What you're kind of talking about is what can we not compromise on when we want to move fast, when we want to be efficient, right? We will, we have to, we have to change a lot of culture and process in the way that we work. When we drive that change, what are we not going to compromise on? Right? So two things that any business cannot compromise on, right? Reliability and security right? These are the two linchpins. You cannot compromise on these two because then you break trust with your users, with your customers, and you are dead as a business, right? So reliability and security are the two things that cannot change. Now, and, and that is kind of what is happening when we talk about shift left or whatever we, um, whether it's container security, API security, data security, right? It's all essentially around saying, if I want to enable the product people, how can I enable them in a way that does not compromise the reliability of like my offering uh, in a data access uh, world that is often about concurrency and latency, right? Concurrency, latency, uptime. These are the three things when you think about reliability and reliability of your offering, concurrency, um, latency, and uptime, right? And then you work backwards from that, right? For uptime, for example, like you said, high availability is required or disaster recovery is required, right? For latency, edge is required, again, depending on what kind of what your user base is, what your user base looks like, right? For highly concurrent workloads, again, depends on the nature of what, where that high concurrent usage is coming from, but whatever the, the, the end of it, you care about reliability and, and, and key enabler is security. If you can handle security and authorization, well, it's a massive boost to the entire business. Now from a data point of view, data security and compliance is critical. And this is again, why you want to change the culture of your organization to be more around data. It's so much easier when we think about this nightmare that we have with API security, right? It's so much easier to say, I have an account. I have an account model in my enterprise, right? I have something called an account. This account has security policies. Account can be accessed by the owner. Account can be accessed by the family member. Account can be accessed. Only these fields can be accessed by the regional manager. Right. So many stakeholders in your organization can access this, 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 this domain model called account based on certain contexts. So you want to have domain model based governance. What you, if you are able to enforce this authorization and security, you don't care about API security anymore. You don't have to enforce security on every single endpoint, every single product feature, because if you bring the shift left all the way to data, Right at a, at a domain model level, if you're able to guarantee security and authorization at that data level, it makes life so much easier, right? Now product people can go and build as many features as they want. They can iterate very quickly. They can take stuff to market. They can validate their hypotheses and they can do that because they are not burdened saying that in every sprint, I have to get a security review, right? Normally this is what happens, right? Every single sprint, you're building a feature. You need to do a security review. If you, if you remove that security concern, and you bring that security concern on the data side, we have, we, we are able to kind of unlock a massive amount of productivity, right? Uh, for the product people 
and we're able to de-risk our uh, uh, our data story, right, in, inside the organization. So that's the way that I think about the importance of kind of some of these other uh, these other linchpins around reliability and security that we think about. Thank you so much. Now I want to shift gear, but not totally changing them, is that you folks recently concluded your fourth annual Asura conference. Uh, uh, talk a bit about the conference, also talk a bit about uh, the, the, the theme that we discussed today, security and other aspects. How much that was there in the conference? This was a fourth annual conference. Uh, and we do this for, for our users and for our developer kind of community. And, um, and one of the things that we uh, announced, so we kind of previewed, uh, we'll be re- releasing the product in August um, is what we call the data delivery network. Um, and so the Hasura DDN is essentially like a, a CDN, like a content delivery network, but uh, bringing that value, bringing that infrastructure layer to real-time data, transactional data, streaming data, analytical data, and now vector data, right? So um, with the DDN, what we want to do is we want to provide a infrastructure layer that provides reliability and security guarantees on data um, so that the this is becomes the edge and the layer uh, uh, that that the product people use to interact with the data people, right? Your data teams, your federated data teams can connect their data sources to our DDN, to our data delivery network, and product people who are building products, you know, in whatever context, internal products, external products, can uh, consume that data from the DDN, right? And the DDN is what is guaranteeing, you know, high concurrency, low latency. Uh, massive amount of uptime. It's not a single point of failure, just like a CDN. We're distributed with multi-cloud, multi-region. Um, we're going to launch with 100, uh, 100 locations uh, all over the globe. So um, that's the infrastructure layer that we announced. Um, and you know, like we were chatting over the last few minutes, top of mind for us is how can we enable more data? How can we guarantee reliability? How can we guarantee security? And all of this we are doing so that ultimately product people and product builders, people you're, you're building APIs, you're building apps, they're enabled, right? So uh, entire theme of the conference was essentially around, uh, you know, our DDN, thinking about what are the various features that we're building to solve for security and authorization, to solve for uh, federation, being able for multiple data teams kind of coordinating together, uh, you know, stuff like that. On the AI front, I think one of the, um, um, one of the key things that we're doing that kind of becomes very natural when you think about from a DDN, a data delivery network point of view, right? An enterprise is connecting all of their data into the DDN um, and product builders are able to access that. One of uh, the the APIs that we provide to access this data, we provide a GraphQL API, REST API. What we're also providing is now a knowledge API and that's what we're working on right now with our community. Uh, The knowledge API essentially allows people who are accessing data to be able to... um, ask questions on that internal data that they have, uh, which is a combination of structured analysis and unstructured analysis, right? So you can go to your kind of, uh, for example, e-commerce inventory data and ask a very specific question and say, you know, what pillows under $20 are good for people with small necks? And uh, what the DDN does is that it automatically converts that into a bunch of structured queries that will go and filter products that are under $20 and then go vectorize that and uh, integrate with an LLM, a large language model API, you know, say GPT or um, Anthropic or BART, and say, and, and result with saying, uh, these, this is the meaning of, you know, small necks, this is the meaning of a best pillow, uh, this is what, this is the summarization of information that we are seeing in our database, in our unstructured data. Um, and so that I think is going to be extremely exciting, uh, the ability to kind of connect our internal private data uh, with kind of global human knowledge that is embedded in these large um, LLMs and um, and kind of use that to provide a knowledge API on data, right? And that's, the, I think, the final frontier of data that we're all going to be so excited about in the, in the industry is that conversion of data to knowledge. Um, and so that's going to be, you know, our, our kind of pioneering move on that side. Tanmay, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about the evolution of data, of course, the event and your focus. And of course, uh, you're not uh, announcing the work that you folks are doing. So I will look forward to talking to you again in August, you know, when you know you folks are ready with the announcement. But I really appreciate your time today. And thank you. Thanks for having me, Swapna. This was fun.